Hello, third years. Today, we will discuss RBC pathology. And this is the last lecture for hematology 1. And for our, our outline for today, uh, we will discuss from the first topic, anemia, going to the classification, hanggang sa hemoglobinopathies. For this lecture, I'll I will divide it into three para hindi masyadong di kayo masyadong ma-overwhelm, no? And um na, nakalagay naman dun sa title for this video kung hanggang or ilang slides yung i-discuss natin for this part of the lecture. So nahin natin the patient history and findings, the usual expected uh, physical examination and yung clinical signs and symptoms ng mga patient suffering from anemia. So first, easy fatigability. Madaling mapagod. Bakit kaya? Because oxygen, which is primarily carried by your hemoglobin, is the major component of ATP, which is yung energy natin, source of energy natin. So kung mababa ang oxygen, mababa ang energy, ang patient madalas nun nagsasuffer with fatigability. Second, shortness of breath. Madalas silang um, nakakaroon ng palpitation, yung mga yan, and um, nagko-compensate kumbaga yung katawan due to decreased oxygen level. So, nagahabol ng hininga. Nag parang um, hinahabol or kinokorek ng katawan ninyo yung uh, decreased amount of oxygen at the tissue level. And kapag uh, base ta magbabase tayo dun sa um, demographics of the patient, sa mga bata, no, madalas, ang, mga ang anemia is caused by parasitism Specifically, your hookworm infection. Kasi sa hookworm infection, mas malaki yung nalulus nating dugo. And kapag um, you further ask the mother or the caretakers, no, baka meron silang presentation such as yung pika, which is an unusual eating habit ng mga bata na lalo na sa mga cases of IDA or iron deficiency anemia. Discuss natin yan later on. And then, while in adult females, ano ang major cause of anemia? There, um, uh, during menstrual period, no? lalo na pang madaming uh, menstrual, uh, menstrual flow. Paano masasabi kung madami ang menstrual flow? If the patient uh, uses um, more than 8 pads per day, and madalas kapag sa gabi, natatagosan talaga, no? kahit may pads, buong kama, minsan may, buong kama, may ano yan, may bleeding, no? may dugo. Then lastly, yung adult males natin, um, lalo na sa mga 60 and above, 50 and above, yung mga yan, madalas kasi sa kanila, no? may mga history of colon cancer. Kaya isa sa mga... Uh, um, ini-investigate natin, lalo na kung chronic uh, case of anemia, lalo na sa mga adult males, you have to investigate further for colon cancer. Okay, definition naman tayo ng anemia. So, we have the functional definition and operational definition. Based on the, on, your, on research, di ba, iba ang functional and operational. Sa operational, paano mo i-measure yung anemia. Okay? Pero generally, anemia is a condition wherein your oxygen levels are decreased. Okay? Paano i-measure? By um, measuring RBC counts, hemoglobin, and hematocrit determination. Kailangan yung tatlong yan, bagsak, in order to classify the condition as anemia. For the mechanisms of anemia, we have Problems regarding erythropoiesis. And second, blood loss and hemolysis. Discuss natin yan later on. Pagdating sa mga classification of anemia. Pero in overview, no, as an overview, ano yung mga problems regarding sa erythropoiesis? Una, ineffective erythropoiesis. 
may ongoing RBC production, pero yung na-produce na cells are defective. Okay? Aling mga conditions na pwede natin ma-appreciate yung ineffective erythropoiesis? So, first, megaloblastic anemia. Yung mga cells, hindi sinusundan yung tamang RBC maturation, kaya naiiwan sila as large size. Kaya tinawag natin silang megaloblastic anemia. Problems with globin chains, yung ating thalassemia, and in cases of uh, porphyria and lead poisoning, sa sideroblastic anemia. Insufficient erythropoiesis naman, mababa ang levels la ng mga RBCs. Maybe due to number one, may problem ka sa bone marrow mo mismo or sa erythropoietin. Okay? Um, ano yung mga pwede mong i-identify as insufficient erythropoiesis? Number one, IDA, iron deficiency anemia. Anemia of chronic inflammation or ACI. Yung ating mga problems with bone marrow, leukemia, aplastic anemia, and maybe due to viral infection due to parvovirus B19. Okay, next, nakita nyo na rin to before, no? Uh, we can classify anemia due, uh, based on the mechanism of blood loss and hemolysis. Unahin natin yung blood loss. We can classify, further classify uh, the conditions of blood loss according to timeline. Kapag more than or less than 3 months, no, pwede natin masabi na acute blood loss yan. And example natin dyan are your traumatic injuries. Ano yung sabihin ng traumatic injuries? Yan yung mga physical injury. Okay? Example dyan, yung mga nasaksak, yung mga na victims of motor vehicular crashes, Okay? Physical injury ang pinag-uusapan natin dito. Okay? Chronic blood loss naman takes for more than 6 months. No? Uh, imagine nyo six, uh, for more than 6 months nag, naglalabas kayo ng blood or nag, nag-lose kayo ng blood. Okay? So tal talagang mag-perform kayo ng anemia uh, out of uh, these conditions. Ano yung mga condition na pwede natin i-classify under chronic blood loss? Yung mga nagbe-bleed na colonic polyp from colon cancer, no? Back in um AUBF, ano ang test natin para malaman if meron tayong or probably meron kayong bleeding colonic polyp. Di ba? Occult fecal, I mean fecal occult blood test, no? FOBT. Nagamit natin yan uh, routinely in fecalysis. Next, we can classify hemolysis into two. No? Pwede tayong mag, ano, classify according to the defects of the membrane. It's either intrinsic and extrinsic. Intrinsic, ibig sabihin nasa loob mismo ng RBC, membrane ang problem. Extrinsic, outside RBC ang problem. I-discuss naman natin yan later on, no? Uh, per, uh, overview lang. Intrinsic defects may be caused by membrane defects, enzyme deficiencies such as your G6PD and pyruvate kinase, hemoglobinopathies, uh, example natin dito, sickle cell anemia, and thalassemia. Extrinsic naman may be caused by Macroangiopathic hemolytic anemia. Macro means big, angio means vessel. So, big vessels ang involved dito. In contrast with microangiopathic uh, hemolytic anemia, maliliit na vessels ang involved dito. And then, other infections such as your malaria. Back in your parasitology, anong species ang involved with malaria? Your plasmodium species. And then viruses such as your parvovirus B19 and babesiosis. Ano ang um, positive agent of babesiosis? Babesia microti. Okay, example ng ating mga um, conditions of blood loss. Diba dito, uh, traumatic injury is uh, classified as acute blood loss. Okay? Pag ito, halimbawa dito, bleeding 
colonic polyp ito, no? It is a picture the uh from a colonoscopy. Okay? So cr chronic blood loss ang meron naman dito. Okay, RBC indices naman tayo. Um, the three most common RBC indices are MCV, MCH, and MCHC. Your MCV stands for mean corpuscular volume. MCH is mean corpuscular hemoglobin. MCHC, dagdagan lang natin, mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. So, anong clinical significance ng bawat isa? MCV, it is the measure of the RBC volume or or the si average size of the RBC. Uh, isa rin ito sa mga index ng anisocytosis pero mas ginagamit si RDW over your MCV. MCH naman, the average, the average hemoglobin per uh, blood specimen. No? Uh, hindi ito madalas ginagamit for classifying anemia, pero sinasama pa rin siya as part of your RBC indices. MCHC naman, it is an index of anisochromia. Ano ibig sabihin anisochromia? Yung um, color of the RBC under microscope, kung iba-iba sila. Because the color will indicate the relative hemoglobin content per cell. Okay? So, ano ulit ang MCV? For as it is used, it is used as an index for anisocytosis, MCHC for anisochromia. Other parameters for the laboratory diagnosis of anemia, first, RDW. Ito, uh, ang pwede lang natin ma-derive na information dito is that if RBCs has a vari variable sizes, no? or kinatawag natin anisocytosis, this is a perfect index of uh, um, to know the variation of your RBC uh, volume and size. Together with anong parameter ang pwede natin gamitin for anisocytosis, aside from RDW, pwede na natin gamitin ang MCV. Okay? Next naman, the reticulocyte studies. Okay? Ang reticulocyte counts kasi are considered as the perfect index of your erythropoiesis. Okay? Pag mababa ang reticulocyte count mo, may problem ka with RBC production that may be due to bone marrow failure or mababang erythropoietin levels. Kapag mataas naman ang reticulocyte count mo, anong pwede niya sabihin? Pwede mayroong ongoing hemolysis or blood loss, kaya nagko-compensate si bone marrow to produce a lot of RBCs. Okay. To further um, study about uh, or to further investigate for reticulocyte count, we compute also for the other formula such as your CRC, corrected reticulocyte count, RPI is your reticulocyte um, production index, ARC is your absolute reticulocyte count. So, um, babalikan at babalikan natin itong mga formula na to, Okay? Sa CRC, ang kailangan mo dyan is the patient, patient's hematocrit. Sa RPI, aside from the patient's hematocrit, kailangan mo din malaman yung maturation time. And I believe na-discuss na to during your reticulocyte count topic. And then ARC, hindi mo kailangan ng hematocrit. Ang kailangan mo lang is the RBC count data. So, aside from RBC count, hemoglobin, hematocrit uh, determination, we also investigate further by collecting bone marrow specimen. Okay? Ano ang pwede natin ma-derive na mga conditions by examining this specimen? So, pwede tayong mag-investigate further uh, if we suspect the following dis disorders. 
if halimbawa, no, meron tayong, meron kayo na-appreciate na mga abnormal cells or t cancer cells during bone marrow aspirate, okay, pwede ka mag, uh, probab ang mga probable uh, diagnosis mo dyan is number one, sarcoidosis. Ano meron kay sarcoidosis? These are granuloma tus um, condition in which you produce a lot of scar tissue, no? Napapalitan ngayon ng scar tissue yung mga uh, bone cell producing um, bone cell producing tissue ng bone marrow. So therefore, bagsak ang cells mo. Leukemia, no? Yung mga cancer cells natin. So instead na um, normal yung counts ng WBC mo, dumadami and minsan itong pagdami na to very defective naman yung mga WBCs, okay? Uh, and instead sa, sa mga other cases, dumadami din yung iyong mga RBCs and bumabagsak yung mga platelet counts. If ever na observe mo sa bone marrow aspirate mo na wala kang masyadong nakitang cells, no? Or tinatawag nating hypocellularity, you suspect of the following condition. Baka may autoimmune disease. Ano ibig sabihin ng autoimmune disease ulit? Ito yung mga condition na nagpo-produce ka ng antibodies against yourself, no? Yung mga organs mo. So baka may mga um, antibodies ka against the Proteins found in bone marrow. The next parvovirus B19 infection no, can cause your pure red cell aplasia or bagsak lahat yung red blood cell lineage mo. Megaloblastic changes. Halimbawa, sa bone marrow aspirate mo, lahat malalaki yung mga cells, walang sumusunod dun sa tamang RBC maturation, you have to suspect the following. Number one, nutritional deficiencies from folate and vitamin B12. Ano nga ulit ang other name ng folate? Vitamin B9. Vitamin B12 is also known as your cobalamin. Okay? Next naman is myelodysplastic syndrome. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng myelodysplastic syndrome? From your general pathology, Pathology lecture, ano ibig sabihin ng dysplasia? Dysplasia means meron disturbance of your RBs or of your blood cell differentiation or maturation. Okay? Mali yung pattern ng inyong stages. Okay? Minsan nagsistop, minsan bumabalik dun sa previous na immature cells. Next naman, may chromosomal abnormality. Halimbawa, yung Philadelphia chromosome, which is found in what type of leukemia? CML, or chronic myelogenous leukemia. So, for this, for the rest of the topics, please open the PDF file about abnormal RBC morphologies. I-discuss natin sila isa-isa. Okay, so... Let's proceed with the RBC and WBC anomalies appreciated under microscope. So, kung pwede, open nyo yung inyong file or print nyo yung file ng um, table of RBC and WBC anomalies. So, isa-isahin natin sila. Okay? So, sorry, medyo mahaba tong lecture. Nakakaya naman sa inyo kung medyo bitin itong lecture na to. Kompletuhin na natin. Okay? So, nahin natin ang mga anomalies or abnormalities appreciated uh, with regards to RBCs. Nahin natin si anisocytosis, which uh, mainly means abnormal variation of the RBC size. Okay? Um, based dun sa R RBC indices, pwede mo tong appreciate through the... Uh, the results of your RDW or red cell distribution width. Okay, ito mga kapagsabi kung madaming or may increase or decrease anisocytosis present in the blood specimen. Recall lang natin, no, RDW is also used to differentiate IDA and thalassemia. Increase ang RDW sa IDA, normal ang RDW sa thalassemia. Next naman, mga macrocytes. Macrocytes has 
um, MCB level beyond 100 femtoliters. So basically, ito yung mga enlarged yung RBC size. So, sino yung mga yan? Nung may kita mo sila from the name itself, megaloblastic anemia, okay? myelodysplastic, bone marrow failure, and reticulocytosis. Kung, ma kung makikita natin, no, itong megaloblastic anemia, myelodysplastic anemia, bone marrow failure has a common denominator. Lahat nangyayari or lahat may problema sa bone marrow, which mainly affects the RBC maturation. And by, based on the rules natin, di ba, um, once RBC matures, dapat lumiliit yung size. Pero meron nga tayong derangement, no? So, it will retain the enlarged size causing macrocytes. And then, we have macroreticulocyte or also known as stress reticulocytes. Nangyayari ito in severe hemolysis Kapag ang um, bone marrow ay in stress, no? kailangan niya na mag-produce na mag-produce ng madaming RBC, yung reticulocyte hindi sumusunod sa rule. Okay? Na may maintain niya yung enlarged size. So, ang tawag natin sa kanila is macro reticulocytes. Okay, dito tayo sa oval macrocyte. No? Oval macrocyte can only be seen in megaloblastic anemia. Aside from oval macrocyte, no, meron pa tayong ibang uh, derangement. May makikita kang hypersegmented neutrophil and how will jolly bodies. So, ang mnemonics natin before, no, ho-ho. H, hypersegmented neutrophil, O, oval macrocyte, H-O, for how will ba jolly bodies. And all of this uh, derangement is caused by a defect of your RBC maturation. Iba ang oval macrocyte from the simple ovalocyte. Okay? Simple ovalocyte is, can be caused by oval, hereditary ovalocytosis, which is a defect in membrane proteins. Na discuss natin yan for later on. Okay, my, microcyte naman, mas mababa ang MCV, less than 80 femtoliter. Tandaan natin yung mnemonics na to, no? So, ang mnemonics natin para sa mga may micro, uh, microcytes is ATIS. A, for anemia of chronic inflammation. T, thalassemia. I, IDA. And S, sideroblastic anemia. So, ito yung may madalas na may microcytes. Okay, next term. Poikilocytosis. Variation of the shape. Okay, huwag kayong magpapalito with the size and shape. Ha? Kapag size, anisocytosis. Ang shape, poikilocytosis. Okay? And then next, spherocyte naman tayo. So, so spherocyte, no? Uh, it is commonly seen in hereditary spherocytosis. Ano ang meron kay hereditary spherocytosis? Has a defect in the vertical anchorage protein. So, tatandaan nyo to back in the first part of the lecture. Okay? Ang problem dito is that it has a decreased surface ratio ratio. Okay? So, mas madaming laman as compared dun sa size niya. Okay? Kaya, um, kaya um, um, MCHC levels nito is increase. Kaya ang um, may kita mo sa RBC indices interpretation, it, it has normocytic and hyperchromic RBCs. Madalas din to makita in extravascular type of hemolysis such as in, in immune hemolytic anemia and extensive extensive burns together with schistocyte. So, halos laging partner yung dalawang yan. Okay? Spherocyte and schistocytes. Elliptocyte and ovalocyte naman tayo. Discuss natin yung mga hereditary condition causing this type of RBC abnormality. Elliptocyte caused by your hereditary elliptocytosis which is a defect in horizontal Anchorage proteins. If ever may problem ka dito, it can cause loss of membrane's mechanical stability. 
Okay? So, hindi makakapag-bend yan ng mabuti across the capillaries. Ovalocytosis naman, or also known as Southeast Asian ovalocytosis or SAO. It has a defect of band 3 protein causing the mem uh, rigidity of the membrane. Pero, no, hindi naman laging bad news dito. Kasi ovalocytosis can confer resistance to malaria. Tandaan natin, no, yung mga malaria uh, plasmodium species, gusto, gusto nila yung mga perfect RBC, walang defect. Okay? Kapag may ovalocytosis ka, ayaw ng mga malaria yan. No? So, wala kang, I mean, ayaw ng mga plasmodium yan. So, therefore, may protection ka against malaria. Stomatocytes naman tayo. There are actually two types. No? Meron tayong overhydrated and dehydrated. Depende yan sa defect. Overhydrated stomatocytosis has increased intracellular sodium. Pag madaming sodium sa loob ng RBC, sumasabay yung tubig, uh, kasabay ng sodium. So, papasok lahat ng tubig sa loob din ng RBC causing overhydration. And this is also associated with RH deficiency syndrome or tinatawag natin RH null. Okay? Next naman, dehydrated stomatocytosis. Decrease intracellular potassium. Okay? Lumalabas lahat ng potassium out of the RBC. And this is the most common type and it has other name, no? Hereditary serocytosis. Zero means dry, no? Dry for dehydrated. Okay? Sickle cell, or also known as dipranocyte, meniscocyte, or oat cells. Oat cells naman kapag less, ang point, less pointed yung ends. Okay? And recall natin yung sickle cell anemia. Ano ang merong genetic mutation dyan? Valine substitute sergotamic acid at the 6 amino acid of beta globin chain. Okay, dapat valine ang answer for the uh, or yung mutation for the sickle cell anemia. HBC uh, disease naman can cause a crystal form a uh, crystalloid form of hemoglobin, no? And in this kind of disease Ano ang genetic mutation? Lysine substitutes your glutamic acid at the 6 amino acid of the beta globin chain. Halos pareha sila ni sickle cell. Ang pinagkaiba lang, ang genetic mutation for HBC is lysine. Target cell naman tayo. Target cell is also known as your leptocyte or Greek helmet cell or Mexican helmet. Mexican hat cell or bull's eye cell. So, madaming ano yan ha? Uh, madaming uh, other names yung mga yan. Okay? And, eto naman, most commonly associated with liver disease, thalassemia, okay? Or other types of hemog hemoglobinopathies. Sa IDA, walang masyadong mga kodocyte. Mas ma-appreciate mo sila in thalassemia. So, one of the differences of IDA and thalassemia is the presence of your kodocytes. Schistocyte naman tayo or schizocyte. Schizocyte or also known as helmet cells or keratocyte. Okay? Dito naman, nagkakaroon... Madalas sila makita in intravascular hemolysis such as in microangiopathic hemolytic anemia and macroangiopathic hemolytic anemia. So, lagi silang partner with your spirocytes. Okay? And an, in other condition, no, it, in, it is mostly seen in intravascular type of hemolysis. BIC or Disseminated Intravascular Coagulopathy. Okay? And, yung mga example natin ng ganitong type of anemia, unahin natin sa macroangiopathic hemolytic anemia, ito yung mga patient na may prosthetic valve sa puso. No? Sa microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, 
ang example natin dyan is TTP and HUS. What is TTP? Thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. HUS is uh, hemolytic uremic syndrome. So let's proceed with acanthocyte or also known as per cell or in other books, thorn cell. Okay, uh, mamukha niya si bur cell or echinocyte. Mamaya, pakita natin kung anong difference nila. And acanthocyte are commonly seen in severe liver diseases, a beta lipoproteinemia, so pakihighlight yan, oh, and pyruvate kinase deficiency. Pyruvate kinase is actually an en enzyme uh, in uh, hospital which has an important role in emden meyerhoff pathway. So, babalikan natin to pagdating natin sa mga disorders of RBCs. Ito na, si Burr cell or echinocyte or si urchin cell. So, tingnan natin kung anong difference ng dalawa. So, ito yung acanthocyte. No? Uh, mas mahaba yung mga projections niya as compared to your Burr cell. Okay. Dito naman, may kita sila in uremia as well as pyruvate kinase deficiency. And next, teardrop cell or dactrocyte. Ito mga type of um, abnormality is commonly seen in um, abnormalities in the bone marrow. So, tingnan natin yung kanilang mga associated disorders. Primary myelofibrosis is actually a proliferation of fibroblasts inside the um, bone marrow. Kaya tinawag na myelofibrosis. Myeloftisic anemia is an anemia caused by a tumor found in bone marrow. And then megaloblastic anemia is a defect in RBC maturation. Siyempre, saan nagmamature yung RBC? Sa bone marrow as well. So, aside from the ho-ho mnemonics natin for megaloblastic anemia, dagdag natin dyan si teardrop cell. The next, bite cell naman tayo. Bite cell is actually an abnormality caused by the macrophages of your spleen. Kapag kinain niya yung Heinz bodies present in RBC, and yung Heinz bodies is formed in, uh, usually in oxidation, caused by the deficiency of your glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. Balikan natin mamaya si Heinz bodies. Dito naman tayo sa mga erythrocyte inclusions. Okay? Unahin natin, skip natin to. Unahin natin si bisophilic stippling. Bisophilic stippling is also known as punctate basophilia. Okay? And it is commonly seen in Lead poisoning, thalassemia, and hemoglo hemoglobinopathies or abnormalities in hemoglobin synthesis. Ano ba tong mga to? It is uh, inclusion made up of precipitated RNA. So, ibig sabihin may something wrong dun sa um, formation of your hemoglobin. Dahil sira yung RNA. Remember, kapag may RNA yung, habang may RNA yung stage ng RBC, doon may hemoglobin uh, synthesis. Next is Howell Jolly Bodies. And Howell Jolly Bodies are uh, fragments of DNA. So, wag tayo magpapalito. Bisophilic stippling are RNA precipitation. Fragments of DNA naman si Howell Jolly Bodies. So, dito, most common, makikita dyan si megaloblastic anemia. Okay? Yung ho-ho natin na um, mnemonics. And pakidagdag na rin, no? highlight din natin itong dalawa. Hypospinism and postplanectomy. In these two conditions, no? di ba ang role ng spin is to segregate or destroy the sequestrate uh, this, the sequestered or old uh, RBCs. Kung wala kang spleen, no, hindi na didestroy easily yung mga dapat ng mamatay na RBC. So, akala ng katawan mo, uh, okay pa yung levels of your RBC, 
So, nadi-disturb yung maturation ng RBC sa loob ng bone marrow, causing the fragmentation of the DNA. Next, your Heinz bodies or the denatured uh, hemoglobin. Ito yung mga hemoglobin na na-expose sa mga free radicals or oxidants. No? Ano yung mga magpaprotect sa kanila dapat against these free radicals? It is supposedly the presence of your reduced glutathione produced by your um, ano tawag dito? pathway called hexose monophosphate pathway. And sa hexose monophosphate pathway, ang, ang important enzyme doon is the glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase. As we, dis as we discussed that uh, topic uh, previously. Diba? And kapag nakain, uh, and kapag dumaan yan sa spleen, kakain ng, ng splenic macrophages yung Heinz bodies, therefore, magkakreate ng bite marks sa RBC, yun ang hitawag ngayon natin na bite cells. And in other books, ang description ng Heinz bodies is that it appears like a pitted golf ball. So, uh, yun yung parang uh, may mga butas, no? may mga pitted uh, holes dun sa RBCs. So, kumukha daw siya ng golf ball na normally na nakikita natin. Okay, next, Pappenheimer bodies. It is a community actually accumulation of iron inside the RBC. So, ano yung mga may accumulated iron na disorders? It is associated with sideroblastic anemia. Discuss naman natin to pagdating natin sa mga disorders. Okay? Mga uh, disorder of hemoglobin uh, synthesis. Okay? And thalassemia. So, in Pappenheimer bodies, or also known as siderotic granules, ma-appreciate nyo sila by using this type of stain, your Prussian blue staining technique. And madalas, uh, ginagamit to in bone marrow aspirate. Next, kabot ring naman tayo. Kabot ring appears to have a double ring or figure of 8 or infinity sign. So, ano ba yung infinity sign? Yan, yung parang nakaigang number 8. Okay? And cabot ring is actually remnant of mitotic uh, spindles. No? Ibig sabihin, it, there's something wrong ulit with the um, RBC maturation. So, balik tayo. Anong mga associated disorders? May may uh, megaloblastic anemia and myelodysplastic syndrome. Yun yung mga disorders of RBC maturation. Okay, proceed tayo with HBH. There is a 3-alpha chain deletion. Ito yung mut mutation, uh, genetic mutation present in HBH. And for now, no, itik note natin na this is the fastest abnormal hemoglobin in alkaline electrophoresis. So, we, we, we will discuss electrophoresis later on pagdating natin sa hemoglobin. And then, uh, kas kasama ng Heinz bodies, no, it also appears as golf ball appearance to, uh, under microscope. So, aside from blood testing and um, bone marrow aspirate examination, pwede ka rin gumamit ng other specimen to investigate for um, anemia. Halimbawa, urinalysis, you can investigate for intravascular hemolysis. Sa intravascular hemolysis, ma-appreciate mo yung hemoglobinuria or umiihi ka ng, with the contents of hemoglobin. Hematuria, kapag sobrang uh, severe na yung blood loss such as in malaria. Diba? Narinig na natin ng black water fever. Okay? And increase urobilinogen levels in cases, most especially nga, dun sa intravascular hemolysis. Fecalysis naman, pwedeng dalawa ang pwede mong ma-derive dito. In cases of chronic blood loss due to colon cancer, you can uh, request for occult blood testing. So, makikita nyo, positive sila dyan. 
Sa mga bata naman na uh, may symptoms of anemia, you can investigate further if merong parasitism caused by hookworm. So, uh, ma-appreciate mo under microscope yung eggs or even the adult parasites. Sa CC, anong pwede natin ma-appreciate sa serum studies? You can invest you can uh, investigate further for the presence of intravascular hemolysis through the decreased levels of haptoglobin. Uh, recall lang natin, haptoglobin is the transport protein for the free hemoglobin. Okay? Increase LDH. Back in uh, CC, napag-aralan nyo na ang LDH is part of RBC membrane. So, pag nagbe-burst ang RBC, lumalabas din ang LDH. So, increase sila. Increased conjugated bilirubin. Again, no? uh, kapag nagkakaroon ng um, dito, free hemoglobin, you can uh, nagko-convert sila into unconjugated bilirubin. And another special test, no? Schilling's test. Para saan naman to? To differentiate pernicious anemia uh, from vitamin B12 deficiency. Okay, as a rule, no? Pernicious anemia always uh, result to vitamin B12 deficiency. But not all vitamin, vitamin B12 deficiency is related to pernicious anemia. So, for, ma malalaman nyo yan further, we discuss natin yung differences ng dalawa. Okay. Pagdating sa classification of anemia, we... Uh, almost always based on the RBC morphology given from the data of your RBC indices. Okay? Halimbawa, sa normocytic, normochromic, ano ang expected RBC indices um, results natin? Normal MCV, normal MCHC. Microcytic hypochromic, low MCV, low MCHC. Macrocytic, normochromic naman, high MCV, normal MCHC. At uh, the same uh, applies to ma uh, this part of um, classification. Okay, bakit walang hyperchromic? Okay, uh, the only hyperchromic anemia is the hereditary spherocytosis. Nadi-discuss naman natin later on, no? Wala nang ibang hyperchromic anemia aside from the spherocytosis uh, condition. Anyway, let's discuss on or overview ng mga classification of uh, anemia. Sa so, normocytic normochromic under diyan yung mga hemolytic anemias, no? Acute bleeding, acute blood loss. Uh, malignancies co uh, causing anemia and splenomegaly. Microcytic hypochromic anemia. Huwag kakalimutan yung ating uh, mnemonics na ATIS. No? A-T-I-S. A-C-I for A. Anemia of chronic inflammation. Thalassemia. Iron deficiency anemia. And sideroblastic anemia. Which may be caused by lead poisoning. Okay. And then, sa macrocytic normochromic, we can further divide or classify this type of anemia into megaloblastic and non-megaloblastic anemia. Sa mga megaloblastic, ito, dito persistent yung increased size of the RBC. This are maybe due to vitamin B12 deficiency na pwedeng associated with pernicious anemia. And folate deficiency or vitamin B9 deficiency. Sa microcytic, normochromic, non-megaloblastic anemia, walang, persiste, uh, walang persisting blast, no? walang masyadong malalaking mga blast, pero ang, ang, ang eventual result, enlarge yung mga mature RBCs. So, kailan nangyayari ito? Sa mga liver diseases, alcoholism, and bone marrow failure. So, have a little break. Come back for the next um, part of this lecture.